Jordan, you just got an extended look at Outer Worlds, a game that I think many people are interested in because it basically seems like Fallout in space. Yeah, that's pretty much exactly what it is. I mean, this is the original creators behind the original Fallout, just releasing a single player game that takes Fallout's formula, Fallout New Vegas' formula specifically, and just puts it into a space setting. Yeah, I mean, first thing I'm curious about is, I mean, one of the huge issues that a lot of people bring up with Bethesda and Fallout games is mm -hmm. that the gameplay isn't great. Yeah. Uh, granted, you didn't get to play it, but you did yeah, get to see it in action. How did it look? Like, does, did it look like it would feel better? I know that's hard to answer. Yeah. Uh, it looked better than what Peter saw months ago, where there was just one person shooting with just one gun, kind of freeze framing at certain points to get a better shot. What I got to see was a person who had multiple weapons, so like a shrink ray, a shotgun, a, a rocket shrink ray. A shrink ray. That sounds like pretty cool. You actually shoot the person and they shrink down in size and they just become significantly weaker. Um, and you get to find out that the reason your character is able to slow down time is it's a side effect of being frozen for 70 years uh, as you were going into space and you essentially have brain damage and that translates into a superpower. And while you're frozen and looking over someone, it's very similar to how in Fallout where you can see whether or not where you're going to shoot someone, it's mm -hmm. going to cripple them or blind them. Uh, they showed us how if you shoot someone in the crotch area, it causes them to just double over in pain and then it makes uh, it okay. really easy to take them down. So you can kind of see how someone's going to react depending on where you shoot them and with what gun you can shoot them with before combat even starts which is very Fallout. <laughs> um, another big Fallout thing, and something that they're making a big point of, is that the story changes depending on your choices. Yeah, so... Uh, and you kind of saw some of that in the demo, correct? Yeah, uh, we specifically got to see a mission where we were going to a planet that was essentially, that was essentially run by this uh, woman who wanted her competitor killed. And when you spoke to her, she said, you can either kill him or you can do something to like stop production in his factory, which would ruin him. And then when you actually got to the factory, both of those options were presented to you. But you also had the option of, when you went up to the dude, he offered to essentially just give you bacon tumors for life, which is, in this game, pigs are harvested for their tumors that taste like bacon. Um, Interesting. <laughs> yeah, it was, it's, it's, it's a game, it's a story. Um, and so you had then the choice of either going back and killing the person who originally gave you mm -hmm. the job, destroying the factory, killing the dude, or just walking away and not doing anything. And they wouldn't actually show us what the outcome of any of those choices were. They're like, you're going to have to wait for the actual game, because they wanted to really focus in on how your choices really impact the story that you're going to have, and so they didn't want to spoil what any of the choice outcomes were, so we, GameSpot, would go into it blind. So one of the things that they've talked about is companions. Did yes. you have a companion with you? Did you, or, or did they have a companion with them? Were they able to interact with the companion? Did yeah, so, you see any of that? So we had two companions. Uh, one was Ellie, who is the girl that's seen in some of the mm -hmm. Outer Worlds trailers that we've had uh, so far. She's the one with the shorter yeah. hair. Um, so this actually kind of reminded me almost a little bit of Mass Effect in a way, because they'll interject in conversations offering their own opinions, um, depending on how you respond to people in kind, that kind of changes your standing with okay. the people. So they might decide to leave you if you annoy them too much, or you do something against their morals, you kill their friend, or they might support you a lot more and befriend you, uh, mm -hmm. depending on that. And that unlocks specific perks in combat. So, for example, one of the people that we had their perk was leader. So our character actually wasn't the leader of the squad. They had given leader to one of the squad mates. You're right. Um, and so, so did that character kind of just call the shots and the player would follow? It was kind of this weird thing where you as the player would instigate combat, so you would take the first shot, but at that point at that moment, the person who was leader would just like take, take charge, yeah, and like kind of like charge in and with guns blazing and like point out like which enemies to like attack first and stuff like that. And they didn't directly state that it was a way to kind of make the game possibly easier for someone who's not used to this kind of game, but I have a feeling that's kind of what it's for. If you don't quite know what you should be doing on the battlefield, you can then assign that role to another person to charge ahead and do the commanding action for you, and they'll 
boost other people with certain perks, depending on what type of leader they are. So you're talking about perks. Now, flaws are also a big part of this game, yes. right? Uh, did you see any of those in action? Because those sound kind of cool. They sound like yeah. they could kind of, they, they improve on that role-playing mm -hmm. aspect. So unfortunately, I could, I only saw fear-based uh, flaws. So basically, like if your person dies to an enemy too many times, then they're afraid of that enemy. So you could uh, develop, uh, I think they just called it robot phobia, where if you die to robots too many times, and every time you see a robot enemy, you take a, uh, just a bad, like status effect and that kind of changes depending on how you've been dying to mm -hmm. the robots uh, repeatedly. You can also get ones like scared of the dark. So like in the mission I described earlier, there was an option instead of fighting your way through the factory to get to the boss, you could sneak through the sewer system, but it's dark in there. So if you were afraid of the dark, that wouldn't necessarily be a viable option for you. Um, but I did speak to the narrative director and she explained that there are some flaws that are not entirely fear based. like. The character she created, she wanted to make a stupid character because that's now a type of character or build that you can have and there's like stupid uh, dialogue options that Forget you can Forget warrior, have. I want yeah. stupid character. <laughs> but she forgot to do that in the character creator. Mm -hmm. um, but she fell off a cliff so many times that her character developed a severe concussion and brain damage and so they got certain perks that made them into a stupid character. So that's kind of how <laughs> flaws kind of work. They are negative in some way, but you do get a perk out of them and they last the entire game. So you can just have like a stack of flaws on your character. But whenever a flaw pops up, you get the choice of whether or not you decide to take it. So kind of going back to the robot example, if you die to a robot a bunch of times, you developed a fear of it, it would be like, you're now scared of robots. Do you want to be scared of robots? If you decide to be scared of robots, you'll uh, do less weapon damage against them, but you'll get a buff whenever you see them, which will allow you to run extra fast. Oh, okay. Um, and so see, then you get to decide at that moment whether or not you want to go with that or decide to be like, oh, I don't really want that trade off, and you can just erase it. But if you do decide to pick it, you are stuck with it for the rest of the playthrough. They're like, sorry, you can't go to therapy or anything like that. You can't get over your fears or whatever. Maybe therapy will be DLC. <laughs> Maybe. Um, so last thing, I, it sounded like they didn't give you a good idea of the scope of the game, but they yeah. have said not to expect like a giant open world, uh, mm -hmm. but you will be planet hopping. Um, what was the setting like? What, what kind of, what was the planet like that you were on? Because some of those planets look really vibrant and interesting and have alien life and all sorts of weird, cool things. Yeah, so we were specifically on a planet called Monarch. Um, and no, you didn't do any planet hopping? Like you didn't no go back to your hopping. ship and yeah. see, okay. Unfortunately, um, they did explain that most of the planets that you've been to have been terraformed to be like Earth. So you won't experience a, like different gravity or severe okay. like weather changes or stuff like that. Most of them are just aesthetically different, it seems. Um, but the area we explored was fairly self-contained. It was about the size of what some of the planets were in Mass Effect Andromeda. Where like there is a space to explore, but it's not like Witcher or Assassin's Creed Odyssey's yeah. size and scope. Well, that was Outer Worlds. For more news and previews from E3 2019, make sure to stay tuned to GameSpot.